here with Sydney Montgomery, an admissions consultant, um, and we're talking about chat GPT and generative AI. First of all, Sydney, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I feel like we're we're in two vulnerable seats right now as, uh, you know, the journalist at the college admissions consultant. It would seem chat GPT would be something that would cause fear for both our businesses. How is it impacting what you do? Um, yes and no. And I think that really depends on how you're looking at chat GPT. And I know we'll talk about it, but I think there are so many parts, I mean, whether it's consulting or helping students through just their own writing process academically, there are so many parts that ChatGPT can help with, but parts that ChatGPT definitely can't replace. So let's talk, let's unpack that a little bit, because already we're seeing schools, certainly here in New York City, take a strong stance on the use of ChatGPT. There's a certain good luck with that kind of ad attitude. What what do you see as some of the immediate concerns from where you sit? Well, I think the easiest, like low hanging fruit is to be concerned about plagiarism, right? And I think that's, you know, there's concerns that, oh, you know, students using ChatGPT, it will decrease their ability to think creatively, to think critically. Um, they'll just rely on it and they won't develop these skills. But I actually think that it's more interesting to think about it in the flip side, like, how can we use ChatGPT to increase these skills? Because I think when you've seen things like Google and Wikipedia, right, students have actually always had the ability to cheat. As long as there have been students, there has been cheating. Mm -hmm. And we have just been better at you know, having plagiarism tools. And now there's GPT-0 in terms of like finding out if your writing is written by AI or written by a human. And so once we have those mechanisms, then I think it warrants a different conversation of, okay, students aren't going to just write their whole essay using ChatGPT because they'll get a zero. So how can we use ChatGPT ethically and effectively in the classroom so that we're not just banning it, but we're showing them how to use it in a smart way? It's it's interesting because when you say that, um, I'm, I'm curious how we'll stop it when we have ChatGPT already passing, you know, Wharton admissions <laughs> tests and such, it does give give us pause. I know you work a lot specifically with helping diverse students um, get into college. Think mm -hmm. in the terms of equity, what impact does it have, do you think, on that conversation around equity, um, college admissions or otherwise? Absolutely. So I think one of the ways that we can use ChatGPT to advance equity is looking at its role in under-resourced schools. And when we look at using it more effectively, for example, one of the things that I'm really interested in is how can it be a thought partner, right? Intellectual discourse and scholarly debate are some of the greatest mechanisms by which we build critical thinking for students. But in under-resourced schools with teachers that are overworked, burned out, have high turnover rate, and teachers that are teaching varied classrooms of diverse learning abilities, you don't always have the opportunity or the space to just have that scholarly debate and push students and get them to think creatively about their thoughts. And so maybe there's ways that we can actually use ChatGPT to be, um, or GPT-4, to be kind of that thought partner and that intellectual debate partner. We need to develop those critical skills because when it comes to college admissions, uh, really what we're seeing is that students that don't have the ability to think introspectively about their own experiences, to think critically and to write, they're not even able to necessarily succeed in college or even graduate school admissions, but even if they are and they get to school, there is a gap. I know for myself, I thought I was a great writer in high school and I was mm -hmm. the first student from my high school to go to Princeton. And Princeton had these freshman writing seminars and I felt overwhelmed. I ended up becoming an English major, but I mm. remember being told my freshman year, my sophomore year, you don't really know how to write a research paper. You don't really know how to engage in scholarly debate with the authors. And that was something I had never done in high school. I had never put myself in conversation with scholars. And that's something that could have prepared me better to succeed. Uh, I ended up using the writing center and it worked out well, but there are other students, when we look at the dropout rates along racial lines, that they get into these situations that high school or even middle school really hasn't prepared them for and they feel overwhelmed and that's, you know, they end up dropping out and not succeeding. 